Hi handsome and welcome to my 30th video. This time I thought that we would discuss a contemporary topic because it feels kind of inescapable. So here are my thoughts on the current state of BDO. I will start with answering one question that many people are asking nowadays. Is the game dead or dying? And my answer to this is perhaps obviously no it isn't. Now, you might think that I say this because I made content on the game and I'm biased because of this. But I obviously don't make any money from YouTube and my Twitch revenue is not really that great either. I play this game and I do content on this game because I love it. And I love the game for exactly the opposite reasons why some other people and content creators are leaving. Which is why I wanted to make this video in the first place. Now, please do excuse me in this video, as although I am scripting it, I have a lot of things that I want to address, so the video might come out a little incoherent. I also won't be putting many edits on the screen, since I want this to be more of a podcast that you can just listen to in the background while doing other things. With that out of the way, let's get into it. The first topic I want to discuss is the overall idea that the game is dying because the numbers are going down, since I know that some of you will bring this one up. There is no denying that the current interest in BDO is at an all-time low, but I think that what the Doomsayers are saying is not entirely true either. The common idea is that the game is losing players because of the recent PvP changes and the lack of content in PvE. So we have killing the open world PvP, removing GVG, changing node wars, poor balancing of AOS, like I said, the lack of grind spots, and we will talk about all of this later on, but I want to now focus on this point of the numbers going down over all others. Are some of the people leaving because of these reasons? Absolutely. Are all of the people leaving because of these reasons? Absolutely not. What we are experiencing is what is very common in basically any MMO and it's called a content drought. This always happens when there is content announced for the game, usually an expansion or a large patch, that the devs are working on, so they can't put much effort into smaller patches and content updates. It happens in WoW, it happens in FF14, like I said, it happens basically everywhere. And while you may find people saying that the game is quote unquote dying, because in the current moment they may have done everything the game has to offer, it doesn't mean that the game is actually dying, because the moment the game releases new content, those people will have stuff to do and they will most likely return. Now, does this sound familiar? Does that perhaps sound like we are a couple of days away from a big new content update in BDO? By the way, this is not the only reason for the lower player numbers either. It very rarely is the case that numbers would go down like this because of a single or even a couple of reasons. So here are some other reasons why the numbers might be going down. Now, I am obviously not working for PA. I don't know exactly why they are going down but I think this just makes logical sense. So, we need to consider that BDO doesn't exist in a vacuum. Other games exist and other games keep coming out. As of writing this, it's been less than a week since early access for World of Warcraft's latest expansion and it's been like two days since its full release. FF14 had their expansion at the start of July and their Savage Raiding tier, which is the end game raiding, opened at the start of August. And we also need to mention some other big single player titles that may have some crossover with BDO, such as Elden Ring's DLC and the very popular Monkey game. Again, are any of these games THE reason why BDO's numbers are going down? No. But are they A reason? I would say 100% yes. But enough about numbers. I'm sure that we will get an income of players coming back to play Land of the Morning Light Part 2, like I said, and those players will slowly trickle out of the game over time until we get another expansion. Just like any other MMO. Numbers are boring. What is less boring is the discussion and overall discourse around the game that is currently going on. People are doing every single last thing about the game, whether it's an actual negative or not. And my point of this video is to go through some of the most common complaints that I see on the internet, mostly Reddit and YouTube. I have already talked about what I think about the pay to win aspect of BDO in another video, so you can go and watch that one. I will only say one thing here. If you think that PA is a greedy company that intentionally withholds content from players so they can milk more money from them, you are simply naive. Naive in the sense that every company wants to milk money out of you one way or another. They are a business, they need money to operate, pay their devs, and so on. 
A lot of the items in the cash shops are also simply overblown in how important or how pay to win they are. Also, if their existence in the cash shop alone is the problem, look at any other MMO and honestly try to tell me that they don't have a similar cash shop with similar items. I will show some examples on the screen if you are really curious about the other MMOs and their monetization and how they stack up to BDO, but I won't be talking about them since I already basically did this entire topic in another video. Now, admittedly, most of the doom and gloom comes from the PvP community, and I would say that they have a point to a certain extent. At least some of them do. I will first talk about open world PvP, since this is where I have probably the most different view than many other people. Open world PvP is only ever good in any MMO at the very start or near its release. Because everyone is on the same gear level, but not just gear level, also the same skill level. As the game goes on, the disparity of gear and skill between new players and older players will grow larger and larger, so there can never be a day in which open world PvP can come back into a game. It is impossible to balance, and no matter what you do as a company, you cannot win. Someone is definitely going to complain, and I think that for new player acquisition, it is much more important to not have open world PvP, since it is one of the largest barriers of entry to BDO. I would normally point to other open world PvP titles in the genre, and show you that the concept of open world PvP in MMOs is flawed from the get-go, but we don't even have to do that, because Arsha servers exist, and they are a perfect showcase of what I am talking about. People will tell you that open world PvP is the reason to play PDO, and then they will usually go to talk about their favorite PvP moments from like 2017 or 2018. Nobody talks about their good memories of open world PvP from like last year. You then have these same people usually complain that Pearl Abyss added a second Arsha server because according to them the open world PvP community is too small to be spread out on two servers. So which one is it? Are the people leaving the game the open world PvPers? Or is the open world PvP community too small to sustain two servers? It can't be both. It simply cannot be both. What's even better is that you will have usually these same people once again complain about guild decks being removed and that these people are now gonna get griefed when grinding on their Kama Sylvia free server and they can't just deck up and kill the guy who's allegedly griefing them. But they will not go to Arsha servers where you can do this exact thing that they want to do without guild decks. It's just extreme hypocrisy at the highest of levels. People also complain about karma bombing and I do agree with them to an extent. It is stupid that you can just karma bomb people, but at the same time, there are two servers where you don't lose karma at all. So go grind there! People always talk with nostalgia tinted glasses about the good old days in 2017, 2018, and how guild decks lead to these long grudge matches between guilds and whatever. Do you know what's my only memory and what I remember when it comes to guild decks? I remember getting corpse camped while gathering fox meat in ancient stone chamber. And not just getting corpse camped, I also remember asking for a protection for my guild and the same guy who was corpse camping me jumping into my DMs to call me a pussy for asking for a protection. Guild Dex was a terrible system that incentivized griefing and all good moments that it could have had were exhausted by 2018. Good riddance. Second topic I want to bring up is Node Wars, and here I am a bit more sympathetic. I think that removing the old system entirely wasn't a good decision. In my opinion, Pearl Abyss should have split it so your tier 1 and maybe tier 2 nodes would have this new Node Wars system, and the rest would have the old one. I think that way you would have the avenues for new players trying the Node Wars out, which was the point of the new system to get new players in, into Node Wars, and the old players can still enjoy what they enjoyed previously, with the added benefit of having to choose for both of these groups. That being said, let's not pretend like the old system was this pinnacle of large scale PvP, because people did complain about it just as much and they wanted changes done. It just so happened that for most people, the changes were a net negative. I want to also touch on the rewards a little bit, because I did get a couple of people saying that Node Wars give too much money now. 
so they incentivize new players and even bad players to join. And that it's become too boring because these players don't know how to do node wars. Well, once again, we have people complaining for years on end that PvP is not profitable. And the moment it becomes so, it's a problem. So pick one. There is also one kind of recent event that happened in NA and I just think that most people are looking at this from the wrong angle. I am of course talking about Cho Nation going on a hiatus and the entire Roots Discord post. People are saying that this is the end of PvP when it should be the beginning. If you don't see how a single guild running a server for years on end Poaching the best players from other guilds that could stand up to them and then becoming basically untouchable is not a problem that I don't know what to tell you. It should be a giant W for the PvP scene since now your node wars will not have a boogeyman that you know you can't beat joining at random times. And now uh, you can actually enjoy PvP that is more equalized but I think that we are in this extremely negative perception of every event that happens that we see the current dictator of NA PvP scene stepping down as a bad thing. Last point on PvP is AOS balance or just balance in general. People love to complain about one class being OP and when that class gets nerfed it's another class that's OP now and the cycle continues. Berserker is popular to hate now at least until the nerfs but we also had Sage being complained about, Dracania, Valkyrie, Striker, Musa, DK, Staff Classes, Megu, Wusa, basically every class in the game was broken at one time or another. True balance is simply not achievable in any game unless every class has the exact same abilities, the exact same damage, exact same cooldowns, stats, ability costs and basically we only have one class with one moveset. If you look across gaming, no game is ever truly balanced. League of Legends has not been balanced according to their players since their release in like 2009. Every card game ever has cards that are just blatantly overtuned and cards that are borderline unplayable. Counter Strike has maps that favor one side or the other and even chess, a game where both players have the exact same pieces to play with, is unbalanced in its core because white goes first. Complaining that a video game is not perfectly balanced is like complaining that food from McDonald's is not very healthy or nutritious. It just doesn't make sense to me. With the PvP points out of the way, I have a couple more common criticisms of the game that I would like to talk about. The first one is a sentence that I hate with a burning passion. And it is, BDO is just running in circles and all you do in BDO is run in circles. So, there is a grain of truth in this statement, but it is such a dumb, stupid, idiotic statement that it just makes my head hurt just talking about this. First of all, let's address this at face value. Yes, if you boil down every activity in BDO to the most basic, rudimentary quality and ignore any and all context around it, then yes, we are running in circles. But you cannot ever tell me that Elvia Orcs is the same as Dekia Crescent and it's the same as Murvax Labyrinth and it's the same as Lumbering and it's the same as Cooking and Alchemy and it's the same as Bartering and it's the same as AFK Fishing and it's the same as Boss Blitz and it's the same as Dungeons. Just stop this dog water argument. It is reductory, it is redundant and most of all it's extremely stupid. Because guess what? Everything is a circle if you look at it from that perspective. WoW dungeon spamming is running in circles. FF14 raids are just circles. RuneScape is literally just running in circles. Going to a work is a circle. Your life schedule is a fucking circle. What you mean to say by it's just circles is that the game is repetitive. And surprise surprise, every MMO is repetitive. Every multiplayer game is repetitive by design because that's how they keep you playing. And if you're the kind of person who says that the running in circles is a problem now because before we had PvP that was the ultimate goal and now we don't have it because open world PvP does not exist and most of the other forms of PvP are in some ways equalized or capped then that's probably even more of a reason why this is a good thing because now the people who either don't want to or can't spend as much time running in circles actually don't have to run in circles as much 
since they are not forced to do so to keep up with the other people. So it's just a good thing overall. But what's the saddest part of all of this is that Perlebis knows this. Perlebis is working towards fixing the issues of repetitiveness in BDO. That's why we are getting new content that's not just running in circles at the grind spot. The sad part of this is that when we do get this content, like in the form of Land of the Morning Light or the Magnus Quest line or now Land of the Morning Light Part 2, people complain that there are no grind zones there and that the content is bad. So once again, which one is it? Do you want to run in circles or not? You can only pick one. What's more, every new piece of content announced to the game that is going to be released in the future is not just grind spots. Land of the Morning Light we are getting is not that. The 100th floor dungeons in the next zone after Land of the Morning Light 2 is probably not going to be just that. And they literally said that the Demon Land, which is the next content after that, will have different type of combat encounters. So like, what more do people want? Do you think that if you complain today, the new content will just magically appear tomorrow? It's just insane levels of doomerism. And don't even get me started on the oh they're gonna scrap it like they did Blue Battlefield or some other content that I remember them scrapping. Like if you say this they're just not helping you. It's insane to me that you have such a defeatist attitude to the point where I honestly wonder why you're still playing a game you don't even like and don't even have any faith in getting better. See. I did a video going over all of the announced content to the game in all previous Calpheon and Hydra balls. And there are two things where Perlebis is extremely consistent at. That is classes, so new classes coming to the game will always come, and new zones. Mountain of Eternal Winter was announced like two years before it was released, Land of the Morning Light was announced like two and a half years, Ulukita maybe a year and a half, even the zones that didn't come with all the tertiary content, they always delivered on the main premise of the zone. There is also a very big difference between scrapping a system or a piece of a content or a region and scrapping the entire region. Not just that, Pearl Abyss has themselves acknowledged that they promised too much in the past and it's very clear that most of what they want to add, they will add sooner or later, one way or another. On a similar note, for the people who say that there is nothing to do once you reach endgame, okay, go play other games and return when there is new content that you want to do. It is an MMO, there will be something that you want to do eventually. Saying that there is nothing to do past a certain gear score in BDO is like saying that there is nothing to do in FF14 or World of Warcraft once you beat the current raid tier. What I find the saddest of all of this is that even things that should be seen as absolute wins for the game are now seen as negatives because of the extreme doomerism surrounding the game. Land of the Morning Light is releasing in the West sooner than any previous content has. And instead of people being happy that we might see a trend in this, that we won't be perpetually free or more months behind Korea in terms of new content, that this could mean that Pearl Abyss is hiring more people in the localization department of their company to be able to do this faster, people think that they did this because they see the downfall of the company and they just want more money. Once again, Despite complaining every single expansion that we are getting it later than Korea, when we finally get it a lot sooner, people complain about getting it sooner. As of writing this, we also got the Berserk collab with BDO announced. Something the community wanted for years. And what is the reception? Oh yeah, they are doing it just because they want money. It's just so extremely defeatist and doom and gloom. If there is one word to describe the part of this video community that is doom posting on Reddit and other sites right now, it would be hypocritical. People talk about open world PvP being goaded in the game, but the Arsha servers are empty. People want PvP to make money, but when it does, people complain about it attracting non PvPers. People will rather stop doing PvP and cry to Pearl Abyss for fixes when they are actively making the PvP scene worse by poaching good players and dominating the server for years. People say that the game is just running in circles, but when the game releases content that is not dead, people complain about not having circles to run in and when other content gets announced, they instantly say that it's never gonna happen. People want content in the game as soon as Korea, but when we get close to it, people say that the only reason is money. It's almost as if, no matter what Pearl Abyss do right now, they cannot win because it will get perceived in the worst way possible. And I simply do not like this. 
But I don't want this video to be so negative. I want to push back against all of this doom posting that I see online. But I am sure that some of you at least want to know what my two cents on the game are as well. And in my opinion, it's very simple. We are in a transitional period. The game is clearly trying to become less of a niche PvP focused MMO with some PvE elements and more of a PvE focused MMO with some PvP elements. In my opinion, this is a gamble that I am personally cautiously optimistic and I am excited to see if it works out. I think the game and everyone working on it knows that it has issues and to me it does look like these issues are acknowledged not in words but in actions and as we all know actions speak louder than words is this transition being done perfectly no in my opinion they are angering way too many people at once at the cost of the new player acquisition and just becoming this pve focused mmo at all cost that being said it all hinges on the new content coming to the game. I 100% wholeheartedly believe that if the new content in the form of Land of the Morning Light, the 100th Floor Dungeon and everything else that's gonna come in the future or in between these releases is good or at least decent, nobody will remember this part of the game that we are in currently. It will be like when Legion released in WoW and the people doom posting about Worlds of Draenor being the end of World of Warcraft just stopped talking. I am enjoying the game now probably more than I have ever before. I would not want to play any other version of BDO that has existed before as I truly believe that what we have now is the best version of BDO we have ever had. The game has issues, there is no denying that, but there is a reason why I decided to make content on BDO and not on some other games. I know that I will most likely get hate for this video, but I wanted this one to be out there. Simply because I know that there are a lot of people out there who feel like me, but their voices are not heard over all the doom saying on these sites. So this is my message to the people who enjoy video today as it is. Keep doing what you enjoy. Don't let anyone take your own enjoyment away from you. Video is still a great game, no matter what you may have heard or read on Reddit. It is the best MMO on the market in my opinion, even despite its flaws, and it will get only better with time. And to the doomsayers of Reddit, I only have this to say. I understand. You lost something you probably held very near and dear to your heart, and it sucks. But try to find the love again, and if you can't, it's okay to let it go. There is one more message that I have and it's specifically to the people who have an actual following. So YouTubers, Twitch streamers, etc. And I just want to tell you guys that if you are one of these people who just do post on your YouTube and Twitch channels all day and all you have to say about BDO is just negative things and all of these negative things are then followed by saying that you love the game, what you are doing is called gaslighting, first of all. And also, you are not helping anyone, okay? You are not helping yourself because you will have these constant negative thoughts that will stop you from enjoying the game that you are playing. You are not helping the new players that maybe want to get into the game, but now they feel like they might not want to do so because you tell them that it's not worth playing and that it's not fun and that the company sucks and it's just there to, to take money away from you. And you are not helping the community either, because now every person in the community has to bear the burden that you create by your following, telling everyone that the game sucks. So, if you truly love the game, like you say you do, consider changing your behavior. You can still criticize the game, I do it myself as well. But to just keep this constant air of negativity in everything you say and do, that's just not gonna help you, it's not gonna help anyone else, and it's not gonna help the company or the game get better either. So there you go. And that is it, handsome. This was very different from my usual content, and it wasn't the easiest to make. So I hope I didn't ruffle too many feathers, as I usually do with this style of controversial content. Remember to like and subscribe, do let me know how wrong I am about everything, and enjoy your grind.